Hello, my name is Mary Barrar, and I am a member of the General Council of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Philadelphia, and one of the co-chairs of the CSSJ Federation Leadership Council. Aging in the Charism is a project of the Ongoing Formation Committee. It is a program especially designed to help us reflect on how we continue to live and be strengthened by the charism as we move into our older years. In this first of what we hope will be a series of video programs, three of our sisters from Philadelphia will reflect on the spirit of active, inclusive love. They will talk about the gift and challenges of living this core value at this time in their lives. We hope you will find this conversation stimulate your own reflection. To help you, we have provided a few questions for your reflection and sharing. May the witness of our lives and our sharing of the state of our hearts continue to be the strength and source of inspiration for one another and for all our dear neighbors. And now, I will turn this over to Anna. Hello. Old age is not for the faint-hearted. That saying has almost become a proverb. We hear it in different ways. Sometimes old age ain't for sissies, or old age ain't for wimps. No matter how it's said, it's true. Aging takes courage. It is a response to grace. Aging brings our identity, who we are, are, and our energy for living, why we are alive, more prominent in our thinking. For us, as religious, these questions are intimately connected with our spirituality and our relationship with God. We hope that our gathering, we three golden jub jubilarians plus, and our discussion on our aging and what enables us not to be faint-hearted, sissies, or wimps, may offer you some reflection on your own aging. My name is Anna Louise Schuck. I live in a parish convent in the inner city of Philadelphia. I am 75 years of age. My name is Mary McGrath. I'm 79 years old, and I live at St. Joseph Villa in Flowertown, Pennsylvania. St. Joseph Villa is a, re a retirement home for our sisters. Uh, and two floors of that building are dedicated to a, to a certified clinical uh, nurses station and patient who need a, a lot more care. And, you? and my name is Marie St. Paul, and I live at our mother house in Philadelphia, and I am 74 years old the youngster in the group. <laughs> well, you know, Mary and Marie, recently I was visiting a friend and we went to the neighboring parish for Sunday Vigil Mass. It was a Sunday with the Gospel, John 17. Father, that all may be one as I am in you and you are in me that all may be one in us. At the beginning of his homily, Father said, these unifying words of Jesus are the mission statement of the Sisters of St. Joseph, that all may be one. I see some of the sisters in the assembly, and I wanted to say that. I have seen them witness to that statement that all may be one. I worked with them. Then Father continued to tell 
uh, and call the whole assembly to Jesus' call to unity. You know, those words really, really deeply touched me. And I began to re reflect on them. At the root of our mission statement, we live and work that all may be one, is what Medaille called the total double union, which calls us to a love that is rooted in our relationship with God, with one another, and our neighbor. Really, it's active, inclusive love, our charism. And I thought to myself, well, now that I am in my seventh half, uh, finished half of my seventh decade, just how am I living this? And I know that, you know, I do try. I do try to bring that love, Jesus, to the world and to those people that I meet, to our community, to my friends, and to people of different cultures. And as I reflected, I realized that it, it's one of my convictions that our ministry is really a ministry of presence, bringing Jesus, that is, who is love, to those people that we meet. You know, it, 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 it's that, it, that is it, it's the presence. It's not age, age doesn't really matter. How many times have we said that, it's to, that the children that we uh, have taught remember us for how we were and not for what we taught. You know that uh, I, I was in a, a very busy administrative work not too long ago. And after I left that work, I found myself a little discontented with me. And the reason was I felt I wasn't doing enough. I wasn't doing enough. And I had to stop back and realize that it's being, it's being, and it's that conviction to me, again, that my other ministries, which was teaching, formation work, administrative, was really a vehicle of that ministry of presence. And so um, that helps me when my, it helps me to feel vital, to be vital, and to, be love and to receive love. You know, we retire, we can retire from work, but we never retire from the Ministry of Presence. I have seen so many sisters really live that Ministry of Presence in sick beds, you know, more than I could ever, ever live it. I'm sure, Mary, you have seen that. At oh, the villa. Absolutely, Anna. And I have had a personal experience of presence. Uh, I came to the villa with an infected knee, and they had to renew the, remove the original prosthesis in order to clear up the infection. It was a long process. But what made that, those months easier on me was the presence of the visits of our uh, retired sisters at the villa. They visited me and uh, chatted with me and prayed with me. And I just noticed or just called it they're living out of the charism of mm. living effective Active. love. And so when I was faced with, when I was discharged, uh, I was offered a job in the sacristy at the villa. And I quickly discovered that the uh, steps in the sanctuary and my knees <laughs> did not get along very well. And so I, I made the decision, the only one that was viable, to retire. I found out, though, that the experience and training that I had 
as a hospital minister and hospice chaplain uh, could be very well used right here at the villa. And so I posted an invitation to uh, invite everyone to a, a session in the evening mm. uh, to remember a sister's, uh, to celebrate a sister's life. And this happens the day before the funeral, the evening before a funeral. And we gather and celebrate her life and share stories about her. There was a wonderful response. And as the sisters talked about it, more and more people came. And it was wonderful to see how they celebrated the sisters' life of living and working uh, that all may be one. And you know, Mary, that has touched the whole congregation. I hope you realize how that has done that. You have, your choices, your decisions have really touched all of us, and I certainly thank you. And talking about choices, Marie, you, that sat North Carolina girl, I know you made a choice to return to the North, and uh, your transition has seemed to be just so smooth. How did you do it? Well, you know, oftentimes health, as well as aging, plays a part in the choices that we make. Um, we don't have a choice about aging, but we do have a choice as to how we age. I had three health incidents in three years. I had kneecap replacement, and the next year I had an emergency appendectomy at age 67. And finally, I had all the signs of an impending stroke. Fortunately, I got to the hospital in time and with the right doctor and the right medication, I was able to avert the stroke. However, I know that my energy level decreased and I began to slow down. After being asked several times <laughs> how many signs I needed to consider changing ministries, which would involve leaving North Carolina, my home state and dear to my heart, I finally was able to face facts with God's grace. At the invitation of the congregation, I returned to our mother house in Philadelphia to serve as sacristan. But I soon found out that new opportunities awaited me. Uh, the sister who was the liturgist was a friend of mine mm -hmm. and a North Carolina connection, and we would often work together. Also, I was able to reestablish SSJ friendships and reconnect with sisters that I had not seen in years. So diminishment on one level opened up opportunities on another, mm -hmm. and I found a whole new way to practice our charism of unity and active inclusive love. Don't you think, I mean, we know diminishment is very, very hard, living through diminishment, but wisdom is, comes to the, uh, makes us realize that accepting diminishment uh, can really help us to move on and to look also for the opportunities. There are opportunities if we look around as, as you have, as I have looked around. And a, the diminishment really can make our love relationship, our relationship with God much deeper as we learn to accept them. Yes, uh, wisdom does help uh, as we get older. Uh, it helps us to uh, face our diminishments. Uh, recently, the congregation gave me the opportunity to attend a program in Concordia, Kansas that was entitled Falling in Love for a Lifetime. It was a, a program for CSSJs uh, from all over our country who uh, have celebrated or served 40, 50, 60 years in the congregation. 
Well, there I met Sisters of St. Joseph from all over our country and Canada uh, who were, uh, came to learn about falling in love for a lifetime. Uh, it was, uh, we talked about, or let me say that uh, t experiencing unity and mm. active inclusive love, uh, you, know, you know, you could just feel it everywhere. Yeah. It was among the group. And uh, we all came together because we had the same heritage and a common interest in discovering anew the charism of, uh, and the courage of Father Madai and Bishop de Maupas and our early sisters. And we came to appreciate them in a new way and how they tried to practice active, inclusive love among the people of the 17th century. But then another way that has helped me to uh, accept uh, my diminishment and uh, move was a sense of humor. Ah. <laughs> I think a sense of humor is absolutely necessary for living in community. There was a, a song some years ago that stated in part, you've got to accentuate the positive. You've got uh, to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative. Oh, that one. Sounds a little bit like our Maxim 61. <laughs> I remember that song, Murray, and I also agree with you that a sense of humor is very important, even necessary, for co community life. But sometimes it's difficult for me to be happy and cheerful. I have been diagnosed as a chronic depressive. Depression brings with it discouragement and doubt and self-hatred and even anger. And it's difficult not to give in to those things. Um, fortunately, the congregation has been most generous with me, and I have received the medication and counseling that I need. And for me, then, the bottom line is that I know God will be with me, close to me, throughout the struggle. Mary. Thank you so much for sharing, really sharing that. How graced you have been to be able to get over that hurdle and to show yourself as a person of creativity and also humor because your other endeavor at the villa shows a lot of humor. <laughs> well, my creative quotient is not all that uh, high, but uh, I do try to uh, to exercise that sense of humor. I believe, too, that the uh, early sisters, their courage and their initiative and creativity comes down through the years mm. to mm. us yeah, today. Uh, kind of like the DNA of uh, family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yes, there is another project that I'm working on. Two of us, it's a, an in-house TV uh, program, and two of us program it every day, and we include birthdays of the staff and sisters, uh, the activities that are going to be uh, shown that day, menus, the sisters really like to see the menus of the day, and the movie that will be shown in spiritual, and liturgical notes. And we have the ability to uh, play music 24 hours a day. And there are always two jokes listed jokes. every day. <laughs> oh, Mary, I love jokes. Tell me what the joke of the day is. Well, the one we posted today is, you're, you will know you're getting older if your back goes out more often than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think my back goes out more often than I, than I do anymore. That's, that's great, Mary. It's really great. I wonder, may I talk a little bit about a presence again? 
you know. Although we are certainly living in our own space and are present to those around us, I do believe that we affect the world, that my love, my joy, my peace, uh, my sorrow, uh, that, that does touch the world, and it brings more peace, more love to the world. At the same time, we can also consciously uh, be more aware and be more present to our planet and to our universe. My awareness and, com and my awareness in communal and personal prayer uh, it can really have a lot to do with the healing, I believe, in the world. I love to lead our community prayer on Fridays because on Friday, Friday is the holy day for the people of Islam. And when we begin prayer, I, I bring our community to that whole sense of being with the people of Islam, of worshiping with the people of Islam. That again, as I said, I believe is healing to us, to them, to our world. And in my own, my own uh, personal prayer, I often imagine myself with the people in Iraq, in Iran, in Darfur, and also sometimes with the melting glaciers. And um, we do, we do affect the world. We are all one. Mary, I, I know at the villa that there's a lot of activities to help the sisters to burden their world. There, are, there certainly are a lot of activity uh, to kind of broaden our vision of the world. We have a computer center at the villa with access to, access to the internet. And I am particularly fond of the political sites that uh, we also have access to. The people who run that, those political sites very often inform us of things that are happening in Congress. If there's a, a new bill that's being discussed, or uh, perhaps it's voting day the next day, uh, they will tell us that and ask us to write to our sen senator or representative and tell him how we feel about this particular issue and how we would like them to vote. Also, some of our sisters are not able to, uh, they are not computer savvy. Yeah. And so we pass on the information to them and ask them to write letters to their senator or representative. And there, there's a third group that we are very fortunate to have. And they are the sisters who can neither use the computer or they can't write letters, and so they pray. Mm -hmm. And I think that we will never know the influence that our sisters' prayers have on the world mm -hmm. and how our, our borders are not so tight anymore. We're able to reach out to people all over the world, mm -hmm. and we are so grateful to have that advantage. I do agree with you, Marian. How wonderful that we do broaden, broaden our world. What, Marie, what happens in your community? Well, we think it's important also to stay informed of world affairs and current events. Uh, that would give us the opportunity to write our, our Congress people uh, and influence um, legislation. I like to pick up the newspaper every day. <laughs> And I turn immediately to the editorial page because I like to check out the political cartoon. I think they teach a lot. And in fact, I have started a, a copy book of political oh, cartoons. Great. I also, of course, read the accompanying articles that go with them. But another way that we can stay uh, informed is through our Justice Commission. They keep us aware of the problems of the day, like human trafficking and pending executions and 
the environment and global warming, and they help us and encourage us to take action and to offer prayers for mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. topics. Yes, and I think that's wonderful. And I think also viewing and discussing good documentaries is a way, that's a way of uh, influ informing and energize, energizing us. Uh, documentaries such as An Inconvenient Truth, mm. Why We Fight, and a more recent one, Sicko, which uh, brings in all the health issues that we're facing today. It, it certainly seems as though we are aging in the charism in many ways, and we are living lives of active aging members of the congregation of the great love of God. You know, it may be different from what we thought or what we planned. But well, you know, someone said once, if you want to hear God laugh, tell God your plans. <laughs> In my lifetime, I've made lots of plans. Have they always involved practicing our charism of unity and reconciliation and active, inclusive love? I hope so. But that needs further reflection. One of my favorite quotes from scripture is Jeremiah 29, where it states, I know well the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for woe, plans to give you a future full of hope. Well, uh, well, <laughs> go ahead. Plans to give you a future full of hope. Uh, it takes a lifetime to accept the fact that God is in charge, and God's plans often involve the totally unexpected. Mm, how true. That seems like a fitting way to end, right, Mary? It's a beautiful way to end, yes. Marie mentioned Maxim 61 when she talked about the song, Accentuate the Positive. Maxim 61 calls us to strive wholeheartedly after the peaceful union with God. As Marcia Allen in Love De Love's Design tells us, it's the grand summation of Maxim 43 through 60. Seeing it all at once is intimidating. It's a process, a life process, year by year, day by day, step by step. You, we, members of the congregation of the great love of God, are rooted in the charism of unioning love. You, we, elders, have lived this charism year by year, day by day, step by step. You, we, wisdom women, are invited, mindful of the experience of our active apostolate, to be attentive, accepting, and creative in our life situation now. Let us be awake to the gift of our roots and to our worlds, our planets, desperate need of our gift, <laughs> the gift of love. Let us be awake to the courageous women who follow us, and let us show them the example of how to age in active, inclusive love. Thank you for being with us. We hope that our time together has given you some reflective moments Somehow, we know that like us, you are aging in the charism, and you are not faint-hearted sissies or wimps. We are proud to be with you as members of the congregation of the great love of God. We wish you peace. We wish you joy. We wish you love. Oh. Well, here we are. It is over now.